kid after the ninth grade to make a decision to go to a baccalaureate program or you go into one of the many trade schools there. And, and I went to that school. Uh, and the Cordon Bleu, which if you saw Jules and Julia, that, that woman who played Madame Brassal, is, her name was Joan Juliet Buck, and she was for 10 years the editor of French Vogue. Mm -hmm. And she just quit one day and freaked everybody out. Everybody said, you must have been fired, what happened? No, no, I want to be an actress. So she's on to a big acting career, and that was her big start. Uh, and went to the Academy du Vin. I don't know if you ever saw the movie Bottle Shock. Bottle Shock was a cool little sort of mini movie, independent movie about a guy named Stephen Spurrier, an Englishman who came over to, Fran uh, to Napa Valley in the 70s and discovered uh, uh, that he wanted to do a little test. And he bought a Chardonnay and he bought a Cabernet. He took it back to France. He did big blind tasting against the Bordeaux Reds and the Burgundy Whites. And the California one won in both cases, blind tasting, all using their French famous, and they were blown away. They were freaked out that that happened. All right, the movie's about that story. And I went to his school for the three years. So I took his first three classes, and, you know, he would do an extensive, intensive on Bordeaux, then he would do one on Champagne, then he would do one on Burgundy, and I, of course, knew nothing about this, so it was fabulous. And the Cote de Rhone's, um, and Hit the Loire, and the other sort of Jura, the crazy, there was one session where it's all the weird parts of France that still grow up in mind, besides Bordeaux and Burgundy. And, and then when I came back, my parents had moved to Malibu, California. They'd stopped in Rockford, Illinois, uh, where my dad was involved in uh, rebuilding an old girls' school from the 1800s, making sort of a modern liberal arts college. And that was my first restaurant job. I worked in a place called The Mayflower. And it really was one of those mob restaurants owned by Tony Salomon. <laughs> Tony Salomon. Mm -hmm. And the women had purple hair beehives, you know. <laughs> and they made like 500 bucks a night in those days. I mean, they had a crowd. Still to this day, Tony is my, sort of my, I wouldn't call him a mentor because he never spoke to me. I was only like 15 or 16. It was like ridiculous. But it was the best run restaurant that I've still seen today, including my own. Uh, he just knew the front and the back of the house. And, and the guy that I, my sort of an idol was a guy named Fernand Point in France. And he had the restaurant La Pyramide in Vienne. You can buy right now online. Thomas Keller wrote the introduction. It's called it's called uh, Ma Cuisine, and it's by Fernand Point. You go by the just type in Fernand Point, and you'll get the book. Buy that book. It's in English, and read of him. And his philosophy and the beauty of him was, I always wanted to be like him. I never wanted to be a chef in the kitchen. I needed to be a chef. I learned how to be a chef. I create all this food. I do all this other stuff. But it was more important for me to be out here and talking to the people, and especially in 1979 when nobody knew what arugula was. I mean, much less five different kinds. Um, I mean, there was all the wholesale fishing you bought was frozen. Everything that you bought was frozen. All the wholesalers there, everything frozen. So the, uh, the fight to get it to be fresh, way before people got into free range and all that stuff. Fortunately, I was able to bypass them, and we had one of the first free range chicken farms in America called Sheldon Poultry, which is still here. Great turkeys at uh, Thanksgiving. All anyway, right, so we came here. Um, I began the process. In, in 70, Christmas of 75. So starting in 76, I met Lois Dwan, who was the food critic of the LA Times. And I said to her, I said, Harry, who knows the most in the, in the professionals about food and wine? And the food and wine world was very small in those days. People ate cause when they were hungry in America, you know. It was a different thing. But LA was a little bit more ahead of its game because of the business of the, the movie business, because they've been to Europe. They've been all over the world shooting a film here and there. And of course, when you're shooting it here or the Cannes Film Festival or whatever, you know, you're exposed to that. And they were really into wine here. I mean, the, the big producers just loved wine. The doctors and lawyers were insane for wine. You know, the, the eyes bigger than the stomach. They buy 10 cases of that, which still to this day they have, probably. But it was that that I... It, it, so it was Jean Bertrand at L'Hermitage, who was the first French guy, who was cooking modern French food. Remember, up until the Nouvelle Cuisine Revolution, the goal of a chef in France, or anywhere in the world for that matter, because they were all Europeans, was to do a Scoffier food, to cook what's in that book. You know, veal Orloff, whether you're in Strasbourg or Nice, you're in New York or London, Chicago, San Francisco, the French restaurant would have the veal Orloff on there, and the goal was to make it exactly like you were taught. And, and that was sort of like the Olympics in those days. You know, like, who runs it the fastest? 
you're all running the same race, you're all running it the same way, it's who wins as to how perfect it really is. So the Nouvelle Cuisine Revolution blew that off the map, and that was very, very important in the late 60s. Michel Garrard, back to La Pyramide for two minutes, Paul Bocuse, Trois Gros, uh, a bunch of other young chefs, which are now you know, in their 80s, were in his kitchen. And he was, he, he was what I like to pride myself after, is he, he was out on the floor, but he directed what was going on in the kitchen. And all those chefs will tell you today how important this guy was. If you get that book, it's a really beautiful book, because uh, it's very easy to read, and it's, and it's, like, a, it's like a philosophy. And you'll see what I'm talking about when you all buy it and read it.